All right, fellas, let's, let's move on to the wings. Because uh, there's, there's some more chatter even in the wings department, man. Right. Again, looking at our top five selection here. This is my choice right here, man. I don't think they'll get him, but Norman Powell would be for me, man. 17 points per game, 36% from three, three and D player. Yes, he's a bit undersized, but you, you, can, you can always move RJ to the three. You throw Norman Powell in there at the two. I think you got a nice, nice defensive combo right there. Uh, Will Barton, another guy that, uh, shout out King Deej. King Deej in the chat likes coming out of Denver. You got the Mar DeRozan, the mid-range assassin, uh, coming from the Spurs. Twenty-one points per game, almost fifty percent from the field. Uh, Evan Fournier, he is the guy who a lot of rumors have him pointed to the Knicks. We'll see what happens by tomorrow, but Evan Fournier has been the hot candidate right now, linked to the Knicks over the weekend. Seventeen points per game, forty percent from three, and uh, you got Kelly Oubre coming from the coming from Golden State. Fifteen points per game, thirty percent from three. Uh, CK at the wing. Who who's your wing targets? You know this list, not this list. So give me give me your wing preferred wing target for this off season. So I have a hard time with Norman Powell because I'm with you. Yeah. I'm a I am a fan of Norman Powell, mm-hmm. but my my thing is like I feel like we got Norman Powell in a younger version in Emmanuel quickly. So it's it's like yes, you know, boost up that offense for us, but. That's just two undersized guards that are gonna be playing the two. That I don't, I don't know. For me, matchup wise, especially with us being as athletic as we become, past uh, with the draft, and so I don't know. I, I have a hard time with that. But if we sign Norman Powell, I ain't gonna be mad at it. But yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm looking more so, and he's not on this list. But I'm looking at the guy that he was traded for, and that is Gary Trent Jr. Mm-hmm. I, I really hope. I know there's those rumors that they're trying to bring him back and keep him in Toronto. But, you know, there's the report that's coming out that he's asking for as much as 50 uh, on a multi-year deal. And to me, that is mm. very affordable. And I would love to have that be a part of our backcourt. Um, so I, 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 Gary Trent Jr. is a guy that I've keep my, keeping my eye on. He's just complete. He's continuing to rise every single season. He's a guy that can be an instant um, uh, help for this team. And just imagine that guy playing with Tom Thibodeau yeah. playing this, this kind of hype up. I like Trent a lot. Uh, yeah, so I, Gary Trent Jr. is definitely somebody I'm looking at. Um, I, I'm having a hard time with a lot of these guys. You know, I I can't co-sign the Kelly Oubre Jr. Nah, rumors. I'm off. Uh, you know, I, I love the idea of Kelly Oubre Jr., but yeah. I, I'm just afraid of which Kelly Oubre Jr. we would be getting on the New York Knicks. You know, there's just too many sides of him. He, he jokes that he has so many different nicknames, but that's literally how his basketball game is as well. <laughs> I just don't know <laughs> which one is going to be on the Knicks. Like, I, so I, it, it worries me. And especially as much money as he's going to be looking for. That's just a scary, scary thing. Um, and the same goes for everyone else. Evan Fournier is going to be wanting too much money. I, I, we, we need the offense. I would love his attitude and what he would bring for this team. But again, it's just it's just such an – the wings, it's just such a, a, a iffy and should we, could we maybe kind of thought process with these wings. But the one that I'm definitely got my eyes on, I would love to bring a part of this team, is definitely Gary, Gary Trent Jr. Yeah. Um, and I know he's not on that list, but he's, he's one of my favorites that I feel like we can get for nice and cheap that can um, – Help us out a lot more than what his contract would be. Al, give me give me your wing target. Don't have to be on this list. Who who do you like at the wing to bring in to to, to uh, fortify this next team? Uh, probably Norman Powell. I just like the way that he can t- attack the rim and he can yeah. just shoot from three. I think he's your prototypical your prototypical three and D guy. I know the height. Uh, he's an undersized. Uh, he would be an undersized small forward, even though he's listed as a shooting guard. But his wingspan does make up for it. Yeah, I think he has a six foot eleven width, yeah. six foot eleven inch win- wingspan, so he can guard those taller, longer guys. So that's not too much of a concern for me. I would like him, but and I think there is that chance. Although I think Portland will try to retain him just so they can keep Dame happy out there. So I'm not sure to how likely that would happen. I do like Will Barton. I think Will Barton is yeah. a really good option at <laughs> at the wing. I like his playmaking. You know, he's not necessarily a knockdown three point shooter, but he's sufficient. Uh, the playmaking is what really gets me about Will Barton. I think he's very savvy. If you want another guy on on the floor who can just help create. For your other guys, that's definitely him. Mm-hmm. You see, you saw that when he was on Denver, whether it was with uh, Jamal Murray, Nikola Jokic, you had um, you had PJ Dozier out there. Mm-hmm. You know, you had all those guys out there. He was still when he was on the floor, he was just looking for guys. I, there, there's like nights where you go off for like seven, eight assists because he's just looking for everybody. He works really well in the pick and roll. Uh, mm-hmm. He's you know he can also attack the rim. He's not necessarily the most 
he's not the greatest at attacking the rim, but he can, he just offers you, he's a well-rounded player at all three levels where you have to honor him as well. But the playmaking for him is definitely the thing that I really like about him because we don't have enough of that. And we saw that in the playoffs, it was just relying on Julius Randle. RJ's not there yet. We didn't have that at our point guard position unless it was Derek Rose. So adding another guy who could just help move the offensive wall along would just be great. Gary, I want to touch on Gary Trent Jr. Because Mm -hmm. when I was writing, I didn't, bring him in there because I just don't think they're, I don't think Toronto's going to let him go. I don't think yeah. you just make that trade for him. Yeah. They got him because he was a restricted free agent. They're going to match any offer. If you would just let him walk, then just, you should have kept Norman Powell at that point. I would love yeah. Gary Trent Jr. Yeah, Toronto, I, would, I would, I would, I would put him at top of this list over anybody. I wrote that in the piece too. He'd be my number one guy, but I just don't think it's realistic that Toronto's going to be letting him go. And it, Miss me on DeRozan. I don't need the mid-range game. I think it's going to lock it all up for everyone else on this team. Kelly Oubre, CK said it right. The idea of Kelly Oubre is great. If you're giving me Phoenix Suns Kelly Oubre, I'll take right. that. If I'm get, I will gladly take Phoenix yes. Suns Kelly Oubre. Right. Right. Uh, Warriors Oubre. <laughs> <laughs> that car commercial doesn't really do it for me, fam. <laughs> um, and then Evan Fournier. I like him too. I think he's a good playmaker. You know, he can attack. Uh, he can attack the rim. Really good shooter. Solid on defense. I think the asking price is where it is for me, but I would not be surprised if the Knicks match it and give him like a short-term deal because I think he's looking for a long-term deal in Boston. I don't think New York will give him that long-term deal. And even if they do, they could probably flip him at some point because he's just that versatile of like a player. So Evan Fournier is okay. He's not like the not he's not my top guy. I'd rather take Will Barton just because you know, he's been on playoff teams. He's been there. He's been there, done that. I think he'd be a good veteran presence. So it'd probably be Powell. It would be Powell, Martin, and then uh, Fournier for me. All right. Shout out B. Sims in the chat. Since a uh, fight out super chat, he says, looking at how we're probably going to be spending, we might end up with Sexton Didwitty at Fournier with our draft picks. I like it. Uh, JD, who's your pick at the wing right now? Because here's the thing. Um, we need a three. We need a wing. You know, we didn't necessarily get our, our, our guy in the draft. Would they go with a Grimes RJ ticket? I, I can't call it right now because, you know, stranger things have happened. If Grimes shows that he's ready, I, I don't think Tibbs would hesitate to put him in if he shows that he's ready on both ends. But I think we'll still go get some depth at the very least and maybe a, a capable starter. Who would be your uh, your pickup at the wing? This is depressing again. It's just, <laughs> it's, 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 it's just is. It just is, CP. Where, where, where's your guy, Melo, man? Where's I Melo? Put, Melo's not no damn wing. He's a big, He's a man. Four, Melo's a four, man. four bro. Yeah, I'm Everybody in the chat. chat's like, yo, four, talk about bro. Melo. Those days are over. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, That's man. Over, the Mellow, man. Mellow Hive oh, is going man. crazy right yo, now. I was getting... not a three, man. We, we'll get they to it. They try to check you, CP. Yeah, come on, man. We see him. Come on, man. Um... Evan Fournier is a great shooter, but yeah. not a liability defensively. Um, shot about 55% from the corner three. So he, he's a fit from a shooting perspective, but yeah. it's just too much of a liability defensively. Um, from this list, my pick, my pick would be, again, when you look at this list, mm-hmm. there is no option. There is yeah. no definite. Right. There's no consensus. Here right. we are trying to figure it out who can yeah. fit. So if you had to ask me, that I said trade for Murray. I'm going to trade route for the whole offseason. Trade for Cam Reddish. Mm. Go with go for Cam Reddish. Co-signs 21 years well. old. Yep. 21 years old. He's six eight, right? Career 80% free throw shooter so far in his young career. In the playoffs, he shot 52% from the field, 64% from three, only four games. But he averaged 13 points in, in 23 minutes for the Hawks. They just drafted Jalen Johnson. They are reported to likely yeah, resign to John Collins. I mean, um, look at, you know, DeAndre Hunter, who is ascending, and now he's ascending. He's going to get major minutes, right? Um, they have a bunch of wings there. Bogdanovich, Herter, like they have a nice rotation. Where does that leave Reddish? Um, and I know that it may be difficult because I don't know that the Hawks will be willing to trade with the Knicks, knowing that we might be building a rivalry here. Yeah. But – if again, it's the same question I asked for Sexton and Schroeder. Would I rather give up an asset or two more for Cam Reddish and go with that route, or do I overpay a Kelly Oubre? 
do I go with the Norman Powell? Because Norman Powell is going to get paid. Yeah, he's and get so paid. He's is paid. that upside enough over Cam Reddish? I mean, when you look at Ubre last year, Ubre and CK, you mentioned to you don't know what we're going to get. You don't know what we're getting month to month with Kelly Oubre. In January, <laughs> in January yeah, of erratic. last year, too he shot 20, 27% from three in January. In February, he shot 43% from three. But then March, he shoots 23%. And then the last month of the season, he shoots 36%. He gets a big contract and he comes to the garden with that inconsistency. Nah. You already know what time it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So going to be the outfit of the season, bro. He was in Golden State. He got a great opportunity, a winning culture, a winning environment. He was, he's playing with Steph Curry. I know they didn't have clay, but you still are playing in a player friendly system. A lot of player movement. And he didn't really take the next step. I know we think Tom Thibodeau is genie here, but he he don't think he's going to develop everybody, you know? And at this point, I wouldn't go with Oubre. I would go for Reddish. Reddish. I'm calling up Atlanta and I'm seeing what they want. For me, I think I think Powell's going to stay in Portland. I think if Portland wants to keep Dame happy, that's one of the moves that they have to make. They ha- they're very limited in what they could do, so they got to keep him. And I think he'll he'll get a much larger deal than the Knicks. Even though the Knicks were interested in him at the trade deadline, I don't think the Knicks will be willing to to make that type of splurge just based on what you're hearing in, in the way that they want to spend. Could be wrong, but we'll see. Um, you know, the DeRozan thing, I think it hurts us spacing-wise. But on the plus side, I see that, you know, a guy who, to me, would be your, your automatic closer because I don't trust the ball in Julius's hands. I think RJ still mm. has to show me more that he can close. But on the plus side, the margin, DeRozan will give you your closer. His mm. playmaking has increased seven dimes for the Spurs last year. That's excellent. 50% from the field. Again, the two areas of concern is defensively. How does that hurt our, how does that hurt our team defense? And spacing-wise... How does that, you know, how does that impact our spacing when you have R.J. Julius, a center, Mitchell Robinson out there? I think, you know, you would have to have a nice knockdown shooter at the one to really help things out. Um, But DeRozan might not be a bad option. Now, he's going on record as saying uh, in an interview with Shannon Sharp that, you know, he wants to go get a ring. Um could he go back to the Lakers on the? I mean, not back. Could he go back to go back home to LA? Go to the Lakers on the cheap, or again, the Knicks can offer a pretty hefty bag. On a you want to get a ring, come to the Knicks. <laughs> yeah, right. Mm-hmm. You want to get a ring, come to the Knicks. But uh, you know, the Knicks could offer that hefty bag, bro. And so, you know, would DeRozan want to take that, or does he want to go home to LA? And uh, I lost lost my mouse there. Does he want to go to home home to LA and take a cheaper deal, try to win play for a ring? I think he should do that, but you know, it's no telling what uh what what his motivation is. But I think again, I think there's areas where where DeRozan could help us. And then there's there's areas of concern. On this list, where I would look to go is um I look at Fournier, man. I think Fournier really played well for Boston. Yes, it was a, a short uh, sample size and only 16 games. But in those 16 games, I mean, he was pretty damn excellent. And as you said, J.D., from the corner three, his playmaking was very good. He finished last year 78th percentile in assist percentage. He was uh, 46% from three on six attempts. Again, only 16 games, but for the season, he was damn near 40 and so I think, um, you know, Fournier can help us. Yes, defensively, you have some questions. And this is where we're going to miss Bullock kind of being that, that jack of all trades for us. Uh, but he's another guy that can get to the line. He'll draw some contact on shooting fouls, non-shooting fouls as well. So, you know, for, I think Fournier should, would, will be a realistic option and, and could be your starting uh, two, you know, starting wing with, with, with RJ back there. And again, he gives you some playmaking. Uh, on the other side, so uh, you know, Fournier you give him eighty million. How much? You giving him eighty for four years? That's the that's the reported what he's looking <laughs> no, for. No, yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, again, this all, is why all, this is crazy. No, all yeah. all these guys are getting two year deals from me, man. All these guys <laughs> hey, are getting two years. I I give you the bag. I give you the what bag for those two years. What do you think of Reggie CP? I mean, yo, it wouldn't be a bad trade, but I I'd go other options. 
You know what mm. I mean? It wouldn't be a bad trade. I'd rather Fournier right now because I, I know what I'll get from him. Yes, Reddish has shown some promise, no doubt about it. And he has potential as, as being a two-way guy. Definitely mm-hmm. came on strong in the series against the Bucs when, when they needed him. For, and again, limited sample size. But if it didn't cost us that much, you got to see what the price is because Atlanta is motivated. Knicks have a bevy of, of draft picks. So I would definitely bring him in and roll the dice on it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, let, let, let me give you three quick names that are not here. I was just going to say, I had yeah, two yeah, names yeah, as well yeah. I was going to bring up. Let's go. Uh, you got, um, with the news of Lowry, you don't yeah. know now if they keep Duncan Robinson. You got yes. Doug McDermott yes. and Otto Porter. Yes. Duncan yeah, Robinson. Well. Now he, I would consider giving the bag because mm. he does what you need, which is he's an elite, elite, elite shooter. Off the catch and shoot, off movement. He's a scrappy defender, plays well within the team concept. Duncan Robinson is a guy I would highly consider giving him the bag. And um, who was the other guy you named? McBuckets? Yeah, I don't trust him. He, when he first came here, I was, I was expecting a lot of three-point shooting from him. He let me down. I was ready to get him up out of here, and we traded him for Moutier, the tank commander. <laughs> and, who, and who was the other guy? Uh, Otto Porter. Mm. Yeah, Porter Porter would be decent on, on a decent on a decent deal. He'd be he'd be decent on a decent. On but a, you see, you see, you see deal. what I'm saying. This off season yeah. to me is going to be about: do we give these players the bag, no. or do we trade and give up assets? Short because term, there's no in between. Bag, give him a short term bag. I'm not giving for a deal. Yeah, Duncan Robinson maybe though. Oh, so Duncan, not Duncan the bag is the guy again. you would give a long term deal to. No. Auto Porter Jr. is not getting the bag again. No. That's not happening. Yeah, that was signed off of his, uh, his his what few seasons with the Bulls or whatever that contract yep. was. He, that's not happening again. Mm-hmm. We saw the injuries. Mm-hmm. He is who he is. He's going to get be a lot cheaper, and I feel like that's an option we should look at because yeah. I do think that the talent is there just for not the price that he was paid uh, originally. So I, I think that's something we should look at. I'm glad you brought that name up, JD. Yeah, my issue with my issue with Doug McDermott is his defense, and this yeah. hit, if you're going to be playing in a Tom Thibodeau edge system. You know, your offense has to be so scorching hot that we can just forget you on defense. And it's not that. Granted, Dougie did make improvements. He's a really good three-point shooter. Yeah, shot 38.8% this buckets, past season. Actually, the one thing that he does really well now that he didn't do with the Knicks is that he's cutting off ball, whether it's baseline. He's really good off movement. He finished 207 of his attempts around the rim out of 299. Dude was in the, <laughs> dude's finished 69% of his shots around the rim. So, you know, I would take that if you want that, but uh, he's more of like a he's more of like a bench score for me. Like if that's what you right. want from him, yeah. I don't yeah. see him throwing him into the starting lineup. Yeah, you want yeah. a bench guy like that? Mc, Mc that, Buckets that, that's is like want. I would get okay, we'll Buckets on like the last day of free agency. He's definitely not a priority for me. You know what I'm saying? He played well this year. He played well this past season. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I, you know, I would I wouldn't prioritize him. We we need somebody with a bit more pop. In, in the starting lineup, and I, I just I don't think that's him. I, I like I like you said, I'll view him as like a bench piece. You, you know what I mean? What yeah. what about Malik Monk, my guy? Uh, shout out my guy Sean mm. Shepard out in L.A. What about Malik Monk? I think uh, Charlotte declined his qualifying offer today. They that's did. Then they I think they picked up Devonta Graham's uh, option in the same time. But I like Malik Monk. I think he he's improved a lot from where, where he started. And I know he was suspended for, uh, I was, it had PE, he was using performance enhancement drugs yeah. too. Right. So I like, especially defensively, he's improved. He's an undersized guard though. That's what you're getting out of him, but I do like it. He shot 40.1% from three, you know, has a good field goal percentage of 43.4%. Uh, Fuck you. I, I, I like, I like him. I think he's a micro, he's truly like a microwave score. My, my thing with him is like, are you bringing him off the bench? Yeah, bench, 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 okay. bench, bench, yeah, if you're bench, having him bench. off the bench, that's that yeah. is perfectly fine no, because I be I fun. like I think he'd be a lot of and he he remind me of like a Jr. Smith type of role. Exactly. Right yeah, yeah, you yeah, took yeah. the words right out of my mouth. Come, yeah, yeah. Jr. Smith come in, be a, be a microwave scorer. His yeah. defense has tr- improved tremendously, especially off ball. He is just looking to make to get the steals. I'd be yeah. happy if we got Malik Monk coming off the bench. Mm-hmm. That's a good perf- performance has hands been drugs. That's yeah, crazy. yeah. No, wasn't it was it weed or, or PEDs? What was it? What was it? Because I'm like, he's trying to hit home runs in the NBA. Yeah, for you, why would you need that for? <laughs> <laughs> hey, try to get through Especially that him with his season, build. Man. Like, what are you doing? Try to get through that 82 game season. Listen, bro. if you're you know, there's reports, there was reports during draft day that the Knicks were heavily interested in Terrence Ross, another name that you know we could have mentioned as well. And I look at it, if you're going to go for Ross, who is kind of like a J.R. Smith type player, mm-hmm. 
just go for Malik Monk. He shot 40% yeah, from three um, last yeah. year. He shot 50, 55.9% from the corner three. And I'm using the corner three a lot because of Thibodeau's system. He likes that uh, corner three, Reggie Bullock. Yes, so a big yeah. increase in that system this year from the previous Kevin year. Knox. And that's an attractive Kevin Knox as well. We, You know, you saw that improvement in him. That's a big staple of Thibodeau's offense. So mm-hmm. players that can shoot the three from the corner um, and overall are in attractive options, in, in, you know, for me, for the Knicks. And again, yeah, he shot 40% overall. He's a good free throw shooter. He's still young. And I just think that with the addition of James Boaknight, um, you don't know yet if they're going to keep Devontae Graham. You already have a LaMelo ball there. You have Terry Rozier. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily think that they're going to get a Terry Rozier just because they got James Boaknight. You can always have a three guard rotation that is this is a guard league um so malik monk is an odd man out i would go for malik monk instead of terrence ross if you ask me just based on the numbers yeah yeah i would say if if you're looking at having a having a trade for ross i would either keep burks or go get malik monk i would just go in free agency we got the money so i wouldn't i wouldn't trade you know value but i mean unless you're going to trade a Knox and you're giving up on him you know, that's a different story. But, you know, if it came down to Ross, I would just sign somebody in, in free agency. The only mm-hmm. thing I guess is if do you say because of, you know, his size at 6'3", um, you know, players of his style, a lot of people like to say, well, we, we already have quickly. So if you fall into that thinking, maybe, um, you know, how many we have a lot gem right now. Um, Let's see if we keep Luca because the way the Knicks are cutting people, Luca might be cut. Yeah, you don't it's know. Not guaranteed. But, you know, yeah. Vildosa Hive out there is not guaranteed that Vildosa yeah. gets kept. You know, he, I don't just, know how. I don't know if he would qualify for G League or what. But you know, only his first season is is guaranteed. The the rest are not guaranteed deals. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. 